science. We get experimental science. We're curious, non judgmental. Alright, so there's a couple of insects in here. There we go. A little bit more of a zoom. So we do have two abdomens in here. One is from the other insect. So we're going to look at this first one and try to ID what it is. So you can see really reliably the cells of the eyes. The mandibles are really nice. Yeah, Cliff, it does look ant-like. We're going to do it a closer zoom in of the face. There are, Cliff, it looks like four wings. One, two, three, four. I am getting definite ant vibes from this. There are, I wonder if this was a mating flight that got caught. That wouldn't be the wildest thing I think we've ever found. That's kind of cool, especially for the eye cells, I think. Yeah, you're 100% right. Tree sap doesn't usually get fly into the air. They, sometimes the in insects will land during mating flights or get stuck into this one. It's like different components, so. It's just the flight is undirected sometimes and they bonk against the tree that has some amp like some resin on there then they'll get stuck this is the head cliff was suggesting it looks very ant-like and i agree i think this is the top of the head because i think we can see the ocelli maybe it's the no nope, maybe it's the underside nope it was a bubble so we got bubbles here this is the underside of the head yeah this is actually a really sick view look at that there is the antennae there right here these hairs that are coming down are the tongue equivalent of the ants and there you can look at how clear the ocelli are or not the ocelli the omatidia and the eye that is th i tell y'all this camera just keeps delivering but that is a good look at the underside i want to flip over the sample after and take a look and see what the overhead looks like because what i want to figure out too is based on the other individual in here if we can sex them as well that's a nice visual clip you can very clearly see each of those cells along the eye. I think the negative has been a really cool tool to be able to have. I think it's making a nice difference. Again, this this being like the regular, regular image, and then here you can much more clearly see the cells. Here is the front view. There we go. There are the three ocelli, those false eyes, the UV sensing organs. There are the actual eyes with the omatidium, and there are our mandibles again. Given its body plan, my sneaking suspicion is that we have some kind of queen ant. Uh, I don't think it looks very much like a, a male on this front. Again, I think kind of cool to see the negative on this. The eyes are much more visible. Like it's a cleaner look for those eyes. Each of those cells are much, much cleaner to identify. Again, I think this is a beautiful sample. Like the colors are really nice. We'll move along to the rest of the body. Again, I have a suspicion that this is a queen. I'll we'll have to take a look at its abdomen, see what the structure is like, see if we can get any information from the wings and look at the other individual in there. There are two insects in here. We're still on the first one and we're just looking at the different angles of it. Um, so let's take a look at the rest of the body. Don't trust the color that you're seeing right here. This is color adjusted. It is not the true color. Uh, and it changes with the light intensity whenever we use it. But So a different light intensity will affect the color. We don't have a good feel for what true color this animal was also because of how yellow the amber is. The three dots on top of its head are the ocelli. Those are the fake eyes. Those are UV detecting organs, as well as some other wavelengths, but primarily UV for flight. So the animal must have been an alate, as we said, a reproductive individual. You can also see here, this elevated part of the thorax is where its muscle is stored. So those wings are connected in. The elevation right there of the thorax is all muscle tissue in there. The exoskeleton doesn't change as they age, even like depleting away some of the, the muscle tissue. So the abdomen, it looks like, is in a bubble. So the abdomen is all along here. And so what's really neat about this, you can actually see the internal anatomy has pulled away from the external. And the eyes are very big, even for a queen. Um, but pictures of black and queens look similar. The alternative would be if it's a male. 
so males cliff will usually have bigger eyes relative to the rest of their head the abdomen is what's getting me if we're looking at just the eye tissue to relation to the rest of the head the males have the biggest ratio of eye tissue to head because a lot of, like if you dissect their brains it's primarily optic tissue and then the olfactory bulb is is a little bit large relative to the rest of the brain like if you look at the proportions of the internal anatomy of the brain it's very different compared to the queen what pressures that to bigger eyes so nadir fiend males are very short-lived their sole function is to mate and then they die and they mate during a mating flight so they had both the male and the queens have bigger eye tissue relative to the rest of the members of the colony Again, that's because they just need to see when they're doing their uh, mating flight. The workers in the colony have very different sets of eyes. So some of those have really smaller eyes. Like you're, you're talking in this particular animal, a couple of hundred cells at minimum in this eye versus the nurses of some ant species like leafcutter ants, 20 cells total of the eye versus here a couple of hundred so it's it's a lot of it's driven by uh what the animal is uh doing for flight you all see how there's a second abdomen here right here can't tell which one is connected to which so we'll need to we'll need to look at a different angle there okay so that is not the abdomen that we were just looking at so this is the abdomen i can't tell from this angle what size the abdomen is so is it again a male or a female that angle we just looked at was very much more like a male size but this is not connected to this creature this is stemming from this other animal it's not a large abdomen given the main the size that we have here i'm going to still say it's a wing reproductive so an alate but this size abdomen right here, it should be bigger if it's a queen. Even the reference image that you found, see how much bigger that abdomen is? It's like double the size of what we're looking at here. Um, so I, I'm again, I'm leaning towards this being a male just because of that size. So yeah, given the size of the abdomen, I'm thinking another male here instead of a queen. But in, in at least in a fast glance, I didn't see a second head, head sample anywhere. But yeah, I think again, Cliff pointed out the biology of the eyes, given their, the size of the eyes. Um, I think that's another pointer of the fact that it's, we're leaning more towards a male, and then especially the abdomen not being that large. I think that kind of hit the nail on the head of being a male. I think I'm suspicious of what kind of ant it is. What I wanted to see, Gwen, is the petiole. That's the connecting point between the thorax of the ab and the abdomen. So this this component right here. Had we gotten a better look, unfortunately, it's behind the wings. Like I cannot make heads or tails of what is actually there. That would be the, a good telltale of what species of ant this is. So it's you're looking at the hump number. So if it was a doublet, for example, we'd be looking at the fire ants region of the phylogenetic tree. If it was a single hump, depending on the shape, uh, we'd, we'd be able to identify, you know, like my gut feeling is based on the mandible, some flavor of harvester ant. The head is a little bit bigger than your normal carpenter ant male, at least to today. If it is a carpenter ant, it would be like an evolutionary earlier um, in time piece, which is, you know, it could be, but... My sneaking suspicion is that it's some kind of harvester ant. And again, that comes down to the mandibles. They are very big biters. There's more samples of these than there are dinosaurs. With dinosaurs, you're able you make species lines for better or worse. We do have tons of insect samples that you can get of the same species. You'll collect a lot, and they, again, it's based on morphology. You can't tell any genetic information out of it. But enough songbird where they have built phylogenetic trees and inferences of what might be going on with these animals. So much better with the uh, the insect view, pull of view than with dinosaurs. The catches with dinos, you're not going to get the full skeletal structure. And sometimes there are just you know regions that you're getting, 
and you're not getting all the bone structure and you're not getting a lot of samples to base off and use species. For example, my favorite dino, the Utyrannus, there's only three samples. And so knowing male, female, adolescent, genetic mutation that causes different sizes, you know, it would be very difficult to identify really what that new species is. At least with the insects, we have a lot more of certain ones. Now again, the, the hell ant, which is Gwen's favorite, we have a fair number of hell ant samples, but not enough that tell us about their life cycle. There's not enough caught as a swarm in amber. So you started to catch insect colonies and groups of individuals living together. And that led to the discovery that this might be a communal colony based animal. Like that's where we pin it in evolutionary time. But insects like the, the hell ants, which we suspected lived underground, are much harder to capture an entire colony out of, right? Because they're just not living near, near a tree base, unlike carpenter ants. Um, this one, by the way, was the other amber piece that we looked at tonight. This was a much better haul, I think. We did talk about some reproductive components of these animals. So we did find that this is a male based on the eye structure, the head size, as well as the abdominal size, which I think was really cool that we identified. We also did see that I got tricked with the wrong abdomen, but it's okay. We got the right abdomen in the end, which is that upper component there, not the lower one. Either way, though, it's too small. So it's most likely more of a male rather than our female that we we're looking for.